Hey guys, welcome back to Werner Farms. And if you're new, be sure to hit that subscribe button and also the like button down below. So today, I figured I could finally get some vlogs started up again. <laughs> it's been a little while, I know. I think the last one was uploaded on May 21st or 25th. Uh, as you can see, the Honda 420 is behind me along with the 9650 Combine. Uh, as you can see, uh, in a later uh, farming movie, I'm not quite sure when. It still needs to be hit with the pressure washer a little bit there. Uh, it was actually pure filth. We haven't washed it forever. Um, so the other day, actually yesterday, no, two days ago, uh, we washed the combine pretty good. As you can see, there are just a couple of spots here and there that the pressure washer just needs to come back out and get hit a little bit, which is just sitting right over there by the fuel tanks. Uh, also, uh, I guess I can give a little bit of an update on what's happened since I've last talked with you guys. Uh, corn's planted, obviously. Uh, the fields around the farm, those are not ours. Uh, long story about those. We used to farm those, but we no longer farm those anymore. Uh, also, yes, that is Bela, the German Shepherd puppy we've had since May 25th. Uh, she is currently 16 weeks old, I believe, either 15 or 16. And yeah, so she's been keeping us busy here. Um, side dressing went good, uh, just the occasional knife break, uh, shearing. Uh, the bolt shearing on the knives occasionally, and occasionally having to replace knives, which that's no big deal. You guys all know that. Uh, we're probably going to rebuild the cold flow on it as well. Uh, probably next spring, late spring, probably. I don't know. It's kind of late to even be, or kind of early to even be, uh, trying to guess at that point what we're going to be doing then you know that's you know you're talking a little bit less than a year from now but pro boxes are all done and ready to go back on tuesday we got those all washed and cleaned out the ones that are untreated which are the ones on the right hand side some of those had treated beans in them that we had the pressure wash out so i took the pressure washer and cleaned i believe there was 10 of them that needed to be cleaned out so, got those done today. At least it was hot out, so it felt pretty good. Uh, and we are pretty hot and dry here. Um, spraying is pretty well wrapped up, except for the double crop beans, which we got in after wheat, which if, if you guys don't know, uh, you'll at some point I'll release a wheat harvest video out. There will probably be more than likely two, along with a rye harvest, which I never really did a lot on the ride. There was a lot of videos I wish I could have done that I just did not have time for at all. We've just been swamped, so I just haven't had the time to get the videos out. So, And plus I had some issues with the GoPro, uh, which pretty much a long story short is that there was an update on the GoPro which I did not know about that released. And there was a bug in both GoPros, actually, that caused a screen to be split. And there was, it was just a lot of recording issues with both GoPros. At least I got GoPro footage of side dressing. I did not have time to do anything with spraying because it was just, I guess you could say balls to the walls or walls, balls to the walls. <laughs> um, working around here pretty much nonstop. There was, essentially, we were crops were growing a lot faster than what everybody expected around here especially with the early rains but now uh, we're getting a tenth here and there maybe once a week I know you guys down in Texas are hurting for rain really bad but we're starting to burn up here as well um, hopefully we'll get a shower tomorrow they're talking so uh, this video was, was recorded uh, I think today's July 15th or 16th. I don't know, July, Sunday, July 15th, I think. Um, this will come out today, so. Uh, 
anything else going on. Wheat went really well. Um, I'm not going to disclose yield, really. I'm not... All I can say is that it didn't do as good as last year, which last year was around 100, 100 to 110. Test weight was around 61 pounds in the one field, so that was really good. Um, I believe, yeah, that was on the irrigated field on ours. Uh, but the wheat in general did really good. Um, not as good as it did last year, but still really good. Uh, we actually did a third shot of nitrogen on our field of wheat not on a rented farm, just because we wanted to see what the benefit was, how big of a yield benefit it was, and actually the third shot did help. I think we got to look at the yield map for sure, but it actually we think it did help a little bit. So we did do two, or actually no, three turns on the pivot, um, irrigating the wheat, which a lot of guys around here did irrigate their wheat along the same times we did. I think most guys just did three turns on the pivot. So, which I think, uh, if you had irrigation on your wheat and you were using it, you did really good on yield. Um, for the fields that were on some blow sand and stuff, I think it went about 50, 55 around here. I'm not sure because we didn't have any on blow sand. It was mostly just on clay soil and our low sand field that was irrigated was had wheat on it so um, which was at 60 acres where the tomatoes were last year if you watch the Warner Farms tomato harvest video that is where the wheat was this year which I will have a video coming out probably within a week I would say probably by next weekend I'll have the wheat harvest videos done I got to get all the side dress videos done I will have a planning video probably releasing uh, about 11 o'clock tonight because you guys will probably be watching this around I think 6 or 7 so if you're watching this later probably in 3 hours 3-4 hours I'll be re releasing another planning video so also uh, be sure to go check out my Pilot of the Countryside YouTube channel uh, it is my drone business channel and I actually released a pretty cool uh, planning video I did for the neighbors. Uh, I'm going to be doing more videos for them in the future. Actually, they're looking forward to a harvest video here pretty soon uh, this fall. So, uh, what else? Actually, I never actually did a video on this. Um, I never actually did any posts on this. A while back, you guys probably remember um, that I asked you guys your opinions on stuff to add to the four-wheeler and I ended up settling on this buy back here this basket that I bought from Cabela's it isn't Cabela's brand I believe it is what the champion champion power equipment honestly I've used this maybe a couple of times this year we just haven't had that much use out of it yet but it's actually come in real handy when we've had to use it so that was pretty good and it's kind of nice being able to just take the basket off and leave the bracket on here so when we're able to move the uh, fertilizer pump for the irrigation which by the way i will be doing a video on that probably this week depending on when we're going to be irrigating again for, for with fertilizer um, we've been irrigating quite frequently <laughs> But uh, doing our fertilizer applications and trying to get vlogs on at the same time is just not played out well. So, But getting back to this, this was actually a really good buy. I haven't used it as much as what I thought I would this year just because I haven't been flying the drone around with the four-wheeler. So I haven't been able to throw the drone case in there and move that around with it yet. But just throwing like the weed whacker back here and stuff like that. Uh, buckets and stuff that was really useful and stuff but moving up to the front uh this is a colpin yeah colpin uh uh storage box in the front this was actually a really 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 awesome buy i love this there's actually a little spot up here where you can lock it if you want to lock it i've never actually had to need to lock it so uh latches are pretty simple you just pull up and then just flip out and then just pull it's got a I believe it's got a little bit of a slight seize like right here so it's kind of nice where uh, 
you know, it's not going to just completely just uh, fall down and close, I guess you could say. I don't know. <laughs> but anyways, moving on, this was actually a really nice storage box. Um, you can fit about an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper in there, so if you have like a nice folder or something, you can throw papers in there and move around and transport those if you're not going to take a truck anywhere or something, which is kind of nice going down to pick up bills from customers and stuff like that locally down here. Um, when I'm out checking pivots and stuff, I can swing by and grab those. That was pretty nice. Um, as you can see, there's a, quite a wide variety of stuff in here. We've pretty much the stuff in here right now has either been from past projects or future projects or current projects, just kind of all just sitting in here and hasn't been able to be really been cleaned out yet ever since we got it. So it's been a real, real handy box. I'd highly recommend adding this and the basket to any four-wheeler uh, if you're looking for something like this kind of a setup. So the light on the front, that is from FCK Light Bars. I will link them in the description. I also have a current sponsorship with them. Uh, I'll probably be getting future lights from them definitely for sure. I believe the next light I'm getting is a set of pods. I haven't fully decided where I'm going to put those yet. I think it might be on the excavator, which is actually sitting just beyond the combine over there by the 4430 and ditch bank mower. So getting a little bit closer up view of the light, I actually did make that custom bracket back there. It's just a piece of angle iron that I painted black just to kind of keep it from rusting. Honestly, guys, after using this and checking pivots nonstop at nights and stuff like that, going through and late night pivot checks and stuff like that and checking on the fertilizer pump and everything, um, I can't believe I ever use halogen lights on this. I mean, the brightness capabilities of that LED light bar honestly, is awesome. To be fully honest with you, I tried uh, driving the four-wheeler at night without the light bar and I can't I can't help myself from not turning it on and using it. it it's just it's such an awesome light and pretty much anywhere I'm going at night I'm flipping the thing on. Probably the only thing we have to do to this yet besides go through and do some regular maintenance on it yet for uh, this fall is uh, change the concaves in there. We actually ran two wheat concaves this year. If you saw on Instagram earlier this year, I actually posted a picture of the Shoop uh, concave that we used, which is the green one right there in the center. And we also use the inserts on the uh, regular roll or round bar concave. So we actually use the inserts there, as you can probably see. I'll kind of move the camera there for you guys. And I believe that is a Kachar... Uh, wheat concave that we put in there the, the definitely you can definitely notice a difference in weight between the shoop and the kachar uh, i'm not sure on price difference offhand uh we just went with shoop just because they were convenient and uh actually if you guys followed me on snapchat you probably saw the snapchat post of us being down there at shoop um down in kankakee illinois and it's not too far of a drive for us it's about i think an hour and a half two hours so uh, as you can see, yeah, there's still a couple of spots yet to hit with the pressure washer, but that's not too big of a deal. Um, but it's it was a definitely a larger improvement than what it was, though, for sure. So, um, anything else going on that I could talk about? Uh, this is pretty much just going to be an update video, guys. Uh, not a lot is going on. Um, we're pretty much in the slowdown period. Uh, we actually never actually did store the wheat. We actually hauled it out. It was dry enough, so we actually didn't have to uh, mess around with it. So actually, that grain bin's empty, except for moving the sweep auger out and getting uh, sweeping up the occasional couple kernels of corn on the ground or on the floor. So at some point, we'll get that cleaned out, probably when we clean out the north bin. So, which still has a little bit of corn in it, yeah. Uh, anything else going on? The office, that was a big topic also that guys have been asking me about. The office is still on track. Uh, concrete work will be done this week, hopefully, maybe towards the end of this week. Uh, we're actually going to figure out the in heat. We 
quoted we got quoted a price on in floor heat and installation and stuff for a business to come in and do it or a company to come in and do it and we decided that we can do it ourselves and we talked with a couple of our seed customers actually that have in floor heat and they recommended doing it doing it ourselves just because it's a lot cheaper so uh we're going to end up doing that. I believe we're going to deal with a company out of Merrillville or Sherrillville to buy this, to buy the, uh, to buy the stuff for the N4 heat. So uh, that'll be cool. So I'll do some videos on those. The concrete work, like I said, either towards the end of this week, if not the beginning of next week. Um, essentially, we're just waiting on plans to get back from FBI that we've revised for the foundation of it and hopefully I would say within I'm going to say at most three weeks till uh, we start uh, breaking I guess well not really breaking the ground but having FBI come out and start building the building so a lot emptier than the last time I came in here uh, seeds pretty much all been returned except for a couple of pallets of beans and two pa uh, two bags of corn there uh, that were brought in late, and the corn was so uh, that'll all get returned on Tuesday. Uh, I believe those two pallets of beans over there are staying. That box of beans goes, and yeah, so this shed will be pretty well emptied out for a while until later this fall here when we. Flip, unflip all those pro boxes and get the rye out of there which the rye the rye yield wasn't as good as what we thought it was going to be now granted i mentioned that the rye was going to do really good yeah that was up until the rain shut off so the rye i'm not going to be i'm not going to cut anything around on that that was that ran between probably i believe Yield monitor said between 20 and 30, but the yield monitor isn't calibrated for wheat or rye, and it's about 15-ish bushel off that we figured out. So it ran between 30 and 40. I would say field average over there was between 32 and 38. Um, not too surprising. It was on our actually our worst sand field. So uh, we... I... To be honest, I have no idea how much rye we even have. I think it's probably close to 400, 450 bushel rye. So uh, we ended up just keeping that all in the grain cart. So uh, which will auger that out into the pro boxes and keep that. I think this year we aren't going to do any aerial seeding. We're going to do it all post harvest, which I feel we got a better stand doing that. So, uh, we'll have uh, somebody air, or, uh, uh, air seed that on with an air boom, probably, or spread it on one to two, I don't know. Maybe even drill some, I don't know. Uh, we haven't fully decided yet, but for sure somebody will probably be uh, uh, spreading the rye or air booming the rye on. I don't believe we're going to do any mixes. I believe it's just going to be straight rye. Um, anything else? Uh, that's pretty much it. So, uh, like I said, guys, this is just going to be an update video uh, and also talking about the four wheelers since I should have done that like two months ago. Uh, I just haven't posted any pictures on it because I want to get the video out before I actually. Uh, posted anything on it so but yeah uh, that's pretty much it for now uh, there's hopefully gonna be a lot more vlogs coming out here just because I got a lot more time so uh, I guess for now uh, don't forget to like comment and subscribe down below and I'll catch you guys in the next video be sure to uh, follow me on Instagram and snapchat uh, the links will be down below uh, thank you guys for 10,000 followers, and also, real quick, uh, scrolling across the screen as I say these closing, as as I say these closings, uh, thank you guys for everybody who voted for the planting picture for the DTN Progressive Farmer Contest. I can't thank you guys enough. So all the guys that are scrolling across the screen, those are the ones that replied back.
uh, I did a little thing where if you guys replied back, I'd star you guys in the D in the DM on Instagram. For those of you that didn't do that, I still thank you guys a ton. Um, I know some of you guys might have just forgotten or something, whatever. It's no big deal. I thank all you guys equally. I'm just giving these guys a quick scroll through just because those guys responded back. So... Uh, thank you guys a lot. I really appreciate that. Uh, Harvest Contest, I believe they're hosting one this fall as well, like they did last year. So fingers crossed on that. Thank you guys a lot. Um, I guess uh, that's pretty much it, it for now. So again, thank you guys. I really appreciate that. And I guess I'll catch you guys in the next video then.